when answering exam questions, there are a few key things to remember. Right? So just, just remember exam technique is a key part in preparation for any exams. And it's something that you'll pick up the more you go and you do past papers. Right, so many like questions in exams are repeats of what will be in old exams. So going and looking at lots of generic questions beforehand is a good idea. When going and answering and questions and reading them, there's a few things you just take into account. Make sure you go read the question at least twice so you don't make any mistakes when you're reading them. As you're reading them, go highlight key information. Don't make assumptions about what the question is asking. Uh, make sure after you've answered it, you go check your work for like daft errors that you might make. And if it involves going and answering something where there's some calculation, make sure that you write your workings out of that. Right, let's go and have a look at the question. So in this question, we're just going to go and have a look at the structure of the leaf. Right, to start off with, it's worth making sure that you know what all the different parts of the leaf actually do. Remember that the leaf is a collection of tissues, right, which all are adapted to go and improve the rate of photosynthesis. So we start at the top, we've got that waxy cuticle. So a waxy cuticle is there to go and just allow lots of light through. Underneath that, you've got the palisade cells or the palisade layer. The palisade layer goes and contains lots of chloroplasts because they get the most light. Underneath that, you've got the spongy mesophyll layer. They're nice and rounded to allow lots of large air spaces. So you can have efficient gas exchange. So carbon dioxide can diffuse in, oxygen can diffuse out. Then down at the bottom, you've got the guard cells. The guard cells can open and close the stomata, and the stomata are the, the holes at the bottom that allow gases to move in and out. Finally, you've also got phloem and xylem. Xylem carry a good flow of water to the leaves, which is needed for photosynthesis. The phloem carry away the products of photosynthesis. And the equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide, plus water goes to form glucose plus oxygen. Right, let's have a look at this question. So if we go in and we're looking at writing a balanced equation for photosynthesis, remember it's all sixes and twos. So we end up with six CO2 plus six H2. And that's going to form C6H12O6, which is glucose, plus six O2. Right, give two conditions necessary for photosynthesis. So the important bit there is the two conditions. So necessary for photosynthesis to occur. Right. So key things. So the presence of chlorophyll, plenty of light, so light intensity. And remember that only certain colours of light, so certain wavelengths of light are suitable for photosynthesis. So for instance, green light won't cause any photosynthesis to take place. Right, then the second part of this bit talks about plants have leaves which contain guard cells and palisade cells. Right, explain. So the key bit there is the explain part. How each of these kind of cells assist photosynthesis. So what you've got to kind of focus on is how it's relating to photosynthesis rather than just stating what they do. So if we're looking at guard cells, Remember that they are allowing things to go into the leaf and out of the leaf, right? So you can talk about the fact that they're controlled by osmosis, right? Osmosis will go and cause them to either open or shut. If there's lots of water moving in by osmosis, then the guard cells will kind of go and bend open like that and open up the stomata. If there's not, then those guard cells will become flaccid and flatten. Right, so you can talk about the fact that they're controlling the movement of carbon dioxide and oxygen or water vapour in and out of the cell and go and relate it to stomata. So we've related it back to photosynthesis by talking about the movement of things that are related to photosynthesis. Right, if we're talking about palisade cells, remember key things about palisade cells is that's where the photosynthesis is taking place. 
So you need to talk about them being on the upper surface of the leaf. Talk about them containing many chloroplasts because that's what's carrying out the photosynthesis. And the fact that the chloroplasts contain the chlorophyll, that's the, like, the green chemical inside of it that goes and carries out the photosynthesis. So the next part of this question just talks about, uh, carries on talking about photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is a process that takes place in green plants. So what type of energy is needed? The key thing there is the energy, not the, not the like, raw materials or anything. So remember, you need light energy. What substance absorbs, right? So the key bit there is the absorbs part, this energy. So it's going to be the chlorophyll that we find in the chloroplasts. Which part of the cell or which part of the plant does photosynthesis take place? So remember, it's the leaf or more particularly the chloroplasts in those palisade cells in the leaf. And finally, down at the bottom, it did ask you again for that uh, equation photosynthesis. So quite often they will go and, and keep chucking in things about photosynthesis. Right, the next bit is describe two ways that you could speed up photosynthesis right so you're looking for things that aren't going to be limiting factors so things like increasing the amount of carbon dioxide increasing that water supply making sure that the temperature is high enough up to a point right so really you want it as close to 37 ish degrees as possible you can talk about increasing the light intensity Right, finally, so the diagram shows an outline of a cross-section of a normal leaf. Name cells 1 and 2 and describe how they are involved in photosynthesis. <coughs> so again, the important bit is we're relating it to photosynthesis. So we've got there, so number 1 will be palisade cells. Remember, palisade cells contain lots of chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are going and carrying out photosynthesis. Number two is going to be guard cells, and the guard cells are controlling the movement of carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out. So hopefully you have found that uh, useful. If you've got any questions, then drop it in the comments below, and uh, and we'll be uploading a lot more. All right. Good luck, folks.